it is my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, um, Min Nguyen. Uh, Min has been part of the OpenStreetMap US organization as a board member since 2019 um, and our chair and president for the last two years. So a big thank you to Ming and all the other board members really. And um, we look forward to hearing your talk, Ming. All right, thank you everyone. So good, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad you could make it to this unique joint conference. My name is Ming Nguyen and I'll be making a case for why sister projects have been crucial to the Wikimedia movement and could be just as important to OpenStreetMap as the project matures. So I'm originally a Wikimedian who got addicted to Wikipedia. And then as each sister project uh, got added to the Wikimedia movement, I got addicted to each of those projects. And then finally, I got addicted to OpenStreetMap. These projects all have a lot in common, though I have to say that the OpenStreetMap community doesn't seem to be quite as interested in uh, local design contests as, we can, as the Wikimedians. That said, we do have a lot in common, such as delicious cakes with awesome designs. Like me, about half of you are addicted to editing Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. These days, Wikipedia is synonymous with encyclopedias. But at one point, we had to remind people that Wikipedia, is, Wikipedia isn't a traditional paper encyclopedia. We don't have to worry about how many trees we're cutting down to write articles about long forgotten pop songs or random parts in Kansas. After all, we're building the sum of all human knowledge. This is the thinking that led to articles about every Pokemon that ever evolved. Inevitably, there was a backlash as the community encountered so many things that just don't belong in a respectable encyclopedia. We developed intricate guidelines on what's notable enough to get an article. And by now, there's probably a university that offers classes in navigating Wikipedia's notability guidelines. There's so many of them, and they're so verbose. There has always been a tension between inclusionism and deletionism. Wikipedias always have to pick a side constantly. Keep or delete an article. Keep or delete an image. These endless debates directly led to some of the first sister projects based on Wikipedia's technology and culture, such as Wiktionary, which is today an important resource for linguists and language learners. How did the inclusion debates lead to these projects? Well, consider the Wikipedia article on yak shaving. This article got nominated for deletion three times because some Wikipedians felt it was just, just a dictionary entry. It just said what yak shaving is, and I'm not gonna tell you uh, just now. Uh, and ultimately it was deleted. Uh, but if you go to Wiktionary, it has an entry on yak shaving with not only the definition, but also the etymology and synonyms, translations, and this wonderful illustration uh, that explains what that is. Um, and I did a bit, I had to do a bit of yak shaving in preparation for this presentation. So uh, Wikibooks had a similar start. Today, Wikibooks maintains a large collection of textbooks, children's books, and cookbooks. But before this site started, people used to write articles on Wikipedia that were structured like textbooks. They were trying to provide this kind of content. Carl Wick wrote the beginnings of a textbook on organic chemistry, but another editor quickly admonished them for misunderstanding the site's purpose. So, he shot off an email to Wikipedia's founders about starting Wikibooks, and the rest is history. I often describe OpenStreetMap the same way that Wikimedians describe Wikipedia's sister projects. It's like Wikipedia, but for, in this case, it's like Wikipedia, but for maps. Yes, OSM has the random parks in Kansas. It has individual trees in some cases, like you see here. And if you've ever played Pokemon Go on your phone, you are using OSM data. So there is a Pokemon connection. Since OSM isn't a, uh, a paper map, it can't afford to micromap intensive details about everything without worrying about running out of space. In 2011, Harry Wood predicted that someday we might even end up mapping individual blades of grass. Well, it was pretty hard to believe at the time. This is what the map looked like just a few years earlier in North America. It was either a barren wasteland or a blank canvas 
depending on your perspective. It was a wild west where we could experiment with new approaches to filling in the map. It was actually pretty cool to be able to build something new. So we imported, we imported a seemingly comprehensive database of roads uh, and other things from the US Census Bureau. And it was, it was awesome. Uh, it was like this basic data that, um, that just made it possible to contribute what you were interested in without contributing all, all the rest of the data. Uh, and it's this basic data that encouraged folks like me to even consider joining the project and contributing to the map. But we quickly discovered that quantity does not equal quality. This is a very tame example of what the Census Bureau's Tiger data set contained. Uh, you can see the road didn't line up at all. And there are some even messier examples out there, even to this day. Based on this and many other imports that people carried out in those days, the OSM community developed a stringent process for approving further imports. A lot of proposed imports never took place. It just took so much energy. Does that sound familiar? It's just one way in which the inclusion deletion debate plays out in OSM. A parallel project, Open Addresses, began with the goal of aggregating public address databases from government agencies that could be used in conjunction with OSM data. But it wasn't integrated into OSM. Today, it boasts over 578 million addresses worldwide. These addresses would not have been available to the broader, ecosy broader ecosystem of OSM-based software had the project's founders tried to work within OSM's increasingly rigid system. Aside from automated imports, another point of contention over the years has been historical railroads, including abandoned railroads. Some mappers go to the great lengths to discover and map the traces of old railroads in the, they, that they find in the field. This is actually great. We love it when, when people go out in the field and, and discover obscure stuff and find ways to add it to the map. But in the quest for completeness, this also means mapping some things that no longer exist, which in general is a big no-no for, for the project. So enter Open Historical Map. It's like OpenStreetMap, but you get to pick which year you're gonna, you want to view. And you get to view, ideally, you would be able to view the whole world, the whole world map for that year. So what you see here, for example, is a map of uh, the internal boundaries of the Inca Empire. Open Historical Maps founder, uh, founders had pretty much the same, the same motivation for branching out. There were all these debates about including and deleting historical data, such as those uh, historical railroads. And we were just going around and around in circles. So we needed to break out of that. Uh, we broke out of that and started from a blank canvas, just the same, the same blank slate. So starting over is really hard. Um, I don't know about all of you, but uh, if I'm like, I spend a lot of time writing something and then my computer crashes and I have to start all over again, it's a terrible feeling. Um, it's it's, it's so, sort of like that when you start at a new project, but you have to kind of remember that it, there is a possibility of creating something new. So some mappers have really been brave. They've, they've taken this clean slate and built something very, uh, brand new that would never have been impossible in OpenStreetMap. This is a comprehensive uh, um, map of historical railroads in the Salt Lake City area. This is the evolution of uh, City of San Jose's um, boundaries over the years very intricate and has a lot of data. None of this would have ever been possible to add to OpenStreetMap because OpenStreetMap's focus is on the present. So what can we do to facilitate um, the addition of this kind of information um, to help overcome that feeling of starting from scratch? Well, on the wiki side, one of the things that the community focused on whenever there was a new project, uh, whether it was Wiktionary or Comedia Commons, um, was to create a workflow for transferring uh, uh, transferring entries uh, over to uh, over to the new wiki. Uh, this proce process was called TransWiki, and these days it's not as uh, active uh, a process, but it used to be a very very important process. Um, and as you can see from the screenshot, there were 
automated bots involved. Um, there's some tooling involved. Uh, and it's really uh, not up to the individual user uh, to, to do all these steps manually. We need something like that for, uh, for open historical map and open street map. Um, until, until recently, when open historical map has become a little bit more mainstream, uh, it used to be pretty common for people to try to bend the rules uh, in open street map. I mentioned the historical railroads earlier, but there's also um, you know, other things. This is a shop that uh, I mapped a long time ago. And instead of deleting the shop as it uh, went away and got replaced by something, I just changed the tags a bit to say, well, it used to be this, it used to be that. Um, we're sort of hoarding the history in open street map where we actually should be moving this to open historical map. So a process like that TransWiki process could actually be of use for us. Another thing that can really help is uh, better tooling for translations. Um, in, in Wikipedia, this is mostly you know, a, a kind of a, a taken for granted. But in, uh, in, op in OpenStreetMap, the software is really structured around OpenStreetMap. So when you create a fork of the project, when you create a new sister project based on the same software, uh, it has a lot of the same uh, translations as the original. And so you wind up with situations like this, where in Spanish, it's saying Bienvenido a OpenStreetMap instead of Open Historical Map. So Wikipedia, uh, the Wikipedia community, the media wiki community has spent a lot of effort in um, making the software more general, generalized um, to accommodate uh, sister projects. And we need to do something similar with OpenStreetMap software. Besides those technical issues, um, sister projects really need institutional support. And this can take many forms. This can be shared discussion spaces, uh, forums, things like that. This can be joint conferences like the one we're having, and also mapathons, where people from both communities, OpenStreetMap and Open Historical Map, can, uh, can go out in the field and, and learn from each other about what they look for. Um, this can also mean formal affiliations. So um, one of the two projects I, I, I highlighted, um, Open Historical Map, is a uh, charter, uh, charter project of OpenStreetMap US. And so in that way, it's formally affiliated with the OpenStreetMap project. And that lends it the credibility that gives uh, OpenStreetMap contributors, um, makes them feel more comfortable um, contributing to Open Historical Map as well. And if we get this right, if we um, provide that institutional support and uh, make it more uh, uh, easier for people to contribute to both projects, then everybody wins. We expand the free culture community because suddenly we're able to map things we could never map before. We could bring in new contributors who weren't interested in what we were doing before. For people who were kind of breaking the rules before, they might actually be a better fit for these sister projects and turn into productive contributors. Um, we increase our relevance in the classroom because um, you know, geography is not everything that's taught in the classroom. There's also history, there's other aspects. Uh, as I mentioned, it, it forces us to make the course software more versatile to accommodate translations, to accommodate new project names, and vice versa, and, and so forth. And it transcends old rivalries. You know, when you think about OpenStreetMap's quote unquote competitors, none of them, you know, Google Maps or whatever, they're not thinking about historical data in the way that we are. So, just as a little bit of a footnote, uh, I did a yak shave and uh, I compiled uh, a history of my contr contributions to all these projects. And um, you can see that uh, OpenStreetMap kind of took over my life. Uh, but then, um, kind of an interesting happen thing happened a few years ago. Uh, as OpenStreetMap integrated better with Wikidata, I found more reasons to contribute to Wikidata. And so there was this kind of uh, back and forth. Um, uh, the, the projects reinforced each other, at least from my perspective. And I hope that's going to be the case for uh, all of you, for the rest of the community. So. Yeah, we don't have a lot of logos on the right side of this slide yet, but maybe we will in the future. Maybe you can help design some of those logos. Um, thank you for, uh, for attending this conference and for listening to this talk. Uh, there's a number of ways you can reach me. Uh, I, um, I go by a couple of different names. Um, and if you're interested in some of the projects I, uh, uh, I mentioned here, uh, here's a link to one of them. Um, I'm gonna post this, this slide on Wikimedia Commons because of course we're trying to uh, reinforce all our projects together. 
Thank you.